Governor, a pleasure to welcome you on the program. Great to be here. Inflation. Welcome to the Bank of Canada. Yeah, well, it's a heck of a building. Um, the inflation genie, many say, is out of the bottle again for the first time in a long time, highest rate in 18 years. It's hurting people. What's driving this? And the real question for most people is, how long is this going to last? Evan, uh, you know, two, two, two things off the top. First of all, every time we survey Canadians, what do we hear? They don't like inflation. They don't like the cost of their cost of living going up. And, and we know that, you know, the rising prices we're seeing for mostly internationally traded goods, that is stretching people's ability to stretch their income to pay their bills. Um, you know, the next thing I would say is that I do want to assure Canadians that we are going to keep inflation under control. We know what our job is. Our job is to make sure that the increases we're seeing in globally pr traded prices today don't turn into generalized and enduring inflation in Canada. And, and we, we have the tools, uh, we have the mandate, and we will be, we have been, and we will be adjusting our tools to bring inflation back to target. The term that economists keep using is this, oh, the, don't worry, folks, this is transitory. Okay. It was transitory a little while back, and it's persistent. And now the bank's even saying it's going to persist longer than we thought. Maybe that's the wrong word. What's a better word to describe what's going on than transitory? You know, I'll, I'll take that on board. I think, I think transitory to economists means sort of not permanent. Right. I, I think to a lot of people, transitory means it's going to be over quickly. And, and, you know, maybe I don't know exactly what the right word is, but it's probably something like, you know, transitory but not short-lived. Uh, and and what, what, you know, can I be more precise about that? Um, well, you know, a week ago we put out uh, a new economic projection for Canada. And we do have inflation. It's running 4.5% now. We think it's going to go up to uh, close to 5 And then over the course of next year, we think as we get to around the end of next year, it's going to be around 2%. So that's what we mean by transitory but not short-lived. Okay, but in June 2020, you were saying, hey, I'm more worried about deflation than inflation. Now we're at 5% inflation. I guess the question is, are you in control? If inflation is global supply chains, global COVID issues, tensions with China, there's a lot of juggling balls that everyone in this building and you are fig trying to figure out. So people say, well, boy, the governor seems confident, but is the governor in control? There's no question We've never been through a pandemic before like this. We've never closed an economy. We've never reopened an economy. The good news is uh, we are reopening the economy. The economy has come a long way back, and now we're facing a lot of the challenges of reopening an economy. Uh, we've said for all along it's going to be choppy, it's going to be bumpy, and it is. But are we in control? Yes, we're in control. We have the tools. We are using them. Last week we took some important steps to adjust our monetary settings. And we're going to continue to, to, to adjust our monetary settings. And the goal here is to secure that complete recovery and bring inflation back to target. People are listening and they say, okay, okay, interest rates. That, you, know, you know, they say, noise, noise, noise. Will the governor have to jack interest rates to stop inflation? Should people, people ask me every day, and if you're asking me, you're in desperate trouble. Should we lock in? I don't know, but are, what, what's the message to people? Are they worried that we're about to get into a new era of high interest rates? So I'm not going to give people investment advice, but um, what, I, what I will say is, so last week when we updated our projections, what we said is uh, the time when we're going to likely be considering raising interest rates is probably going to be sooner than we thought. Uh, last week we said it, it's going to be sometime around the middle of next year. And if you want it in months, sometime between April and September. That's, that's uh, how we see things right now. Of course, uh, we're going to get new information. The economy is going to keep evolving. We may have to adjust that. But right now, what we're saying is uh, you know, interest rates have been low for long. They're not going to be as low for as long. Right. My parents would say, I remember 18%, 20% interest rates. But when you're saying, I'm just trying to get some perspective, we're not talking about, oh, we're going to go from the historic lows back into what were, in some cases, historic highs. What are we talking about? Are we talking about going up a point or two, or are we talking about strap in 5 8% higher? Let, let, let's just think about where we are right now. Our policy right now 
is at one quarter of one percent. That's as low as it can go. Right. So when we talk about uh, you know coming to the time considering raising interest rates, we're talking about you know moving up to still pretty low rates, but off these ultra low rates. What factors on the horizon are you watching for that may drive inflation? People say, gosh, I'm worried about China. Gosh, I'm worried about we're getting vaccinated, but you know, the continent of Africa has got 4%. I don't know what's, if there's gonna be a fifth wave somewhere else. I'm worried about supply chain issues. What, worry, like, what factors do you watch that may disrupt the forecast? Well, you just named, uh, you know, uh, we, we, we watch all those factors you just named, but, but let me focus in on some of them that we're particularly focused on. So these global supply chain issues, uh, you know, why, 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 what are they, where are they coming from? Why are they more persistent? Well, we've seen this, the good news is we've seen this rapid surge in global demand for goods. The global economy is recovering. The problem is supply is still impaired. These, you know, there are still production problems in parts of the world because plants have to get shut down because of outbreaks of COVID. Uh, there are shipping bottlenecks. There's problems at ports. There are good reasons to believe that you know, as the world gets more vaccinated, uh, as investments in logistics take place, and as consumers shift, you know, we've been buying a lot of goods because we can't get services. But as now we can get services. So as, as consumers, households start to shift back to more services and less goods, you know, those goods, they won't have to get produced. They won't have to get shipped. That'll take some pressure off. It's very rare that the Bank of Canada and you get politicized, but you have, you've seen Pierre Polyever, the Conservative MP, tweets about you a lot, and the bank. The allegation is that the, quote, printing of money, quantitative easing, the buying of bonds to increase the money supply that people may hear about, is actually one of the key causes, and that rolling it back has vindicated the critics that say, at the behest of the Trudeau government, the Bank of Canada is, quote, printing money, and that's caused inflation. The, of course, the bank is independent from the government, but what do you make of A, those criticisms, and what's the response to your policies are causing inflation? So first of all, I want to I want to be very clear. Our policies are guided by achieving our inflation target. These extraordinary measures we took, you know, as you said earlier, uh, over a year ago, at the start of the pandemic, inflation was actually negative. The big fear was deflation. We took extraordinary measures to help Canadians get through this, support that recovery, and, and to, to a large extent it's worked. Obviously, fiscal policy has played an important role as well. And, and of course, vaccination policy, critical. You can't have a healthy economy without healthy people. Uh, that has been our guide. With respect to quantitative easing, yes, it's a new tool. Uh, it's not the same thing. We're not printing banknotes to buy government bonds. We are creating, um, settlement balances, which is a kind of central bank money. Um, but the important message to Canadians is quantitative easing, buying government bonds, is just a different way of lowering interest rates. See, I can see your time as a dean of a school is paying off as you explain these things, which is good. Um, there is another issue, which is the housing market. And people are saying, well, low rates are driving crazy house prices, and we've got concerns now about a housing bubble. Do you have concerns about that? We, we have for some time expressed concern about housing. Uh, it, it, it is a vulnerability here in Canada. Uh, some households are overstretching to, to get that house. Um, you know, this is a, it was a vulnerability before the pandemic. Right. Um, the pandemic has, has actually increased demand for bigger houses because We've been spending so much time at home. Uh, people are working at home, children are studying at home, people want bigger houses and, and interest rates are low and that is fueling uh, strong demand for housing. And there is a risk you get into these extrapolative expectations. You know, people, people have a fear of missing out. I, I get letters from Canadians. I get letters from young families. Um, I recognize people are having a hard time. And you know, really the solution to this problem is, is supply. We've got to increase supply of housing. We've been in this for about a decade in Canada. Um, and I am pleased to see that there is greater recognition around Ottawa in the provinces that really the solution is we've got to accelerate supply. A lot of Canadians are saying our deficit has passed a trillion dollars. We have subsidized industries, so our, de our, our debts are passing a trillion dollars. Our deficits are, you know, $280 billion. I'm worried 
deficits are too high, debts are too high, subnational debts in the provinces, consumer. Do those worry, are, are we approaching kind of the thing that you kind of wake up at night and say, holy mackinac, I'm, I'm worried about this stuff? Um, look, Canada was fortunate that, it, you know, it went into this crisis with the lowest debt to GDP ratio in the G7. Uh, from a monetary perspective, uh, we hadn't done quantitative easing back in 08, 09. We had one of the smallest balance sheets uh, among leading central banks. Uh, so on both fronts, uh, that meant Canada could have a you know, full bore response. Um, on both fiscal and monetary policy, there was, you know, they were extraordinary uh, measures taken There's rapidly firepower. in scale. There was a lot of firepower. And that has really helped Canadians. It, it, it put a floor under this crisis. It supported people uh, that were put out of work through no fault of their own uh, through this crisis. Uh, and you know, that has been a key to supporting this recovery. As we come out of this now, we're scaling those things back. Uh, last week, we, we, we uh, ended our, our uh, large-scale bond buying program, quantitative easing. The government is, has, um, uh, the government, uh, most of the government extraordinary measures have expired. There are some certain targeted ones, uh, but those things are getting scaled back. You know, the, the message is, look, when you've got your firepower, you're in a crisis, you want to use it effectively. As things normalize, you want to get, you, you want to withdraw for that so that you don't create, a, um, you know, a, a structural deficit problem. Uh, in the government's own, own projections, they have the debt to GDP ratio stabilizing comes down a titch. Um, you know, we still have the lowest debt to GDP ratio in, in the G7. Uh, and the plan is to stabilize it. So, um, look, you definitely want to keep your eye on that, uh, but uh, I don't think we're in the danger zone. I got to ask you about crypto. The whole, everybody said, oh, I just invested in Bitcoin or th this one and that one, and is the future of money crypto? Is that going to happen? Where, is the, where are you on that, and what does it mean for stabilization, security, crime? I mean, this is a huge challenge to the classic monetary system. What's your view on, on the future of crypto? You got a lot of big questions, Evan. Um, well, <coughs> how often do I get so, to talk to you, Gov? Yeah, look, it's a pleasure. Um, all the things we think about. So, first of all, um, you know, we have banknotes, uh, and we're going to have banknotes, at least for the whole time that I'm governor. Um, they're not going away. Uh, at the same time, we you know, our economy is becoming more digital uh, and the pandemic has accelerated that. And so you do have to ask your question, you do have to ask yourself the question, you know, should the central bank give Canadians the ability to have central bank money in a digital format? Um, we, we've been doing a lot of work, uh, I, I would say we've been doing a lot of R&D, first of all, doing research on what are the features that you would want in a digital currency. Um, how could we do that? What are the risks? And now I would say we're move, moving from the R and R and D to the D, more to the development. Okay, okay. now we've, we've, we've done a lot of research. Let's, let's see, could we actually you know, develop? It, it's, still, it's still some ways off, and ultimately whether we have a central bank digital currency in this country is a decision of the Minister of Finance. Um, but we certainly want to be ready uh, if we come to the view, and then the government comes to the view, that it would make sense to have a central bank digital Although, currency. Right now, people are buying Bitcoin anyway. Yeah, Bit, Bitcoin though, let's be clear, Bitcoin is not a digital currency. People, people do not use Bitcoin to, to buy things. People use Bitcoin, they're speculating. It's an investment. Uh, and I'll let other people give investment advice as to whether it's a good investment. But it is not a currency in the sense th that you and I uh, transact in, in Bitcoin. Well, people are paying for stuff. They're paying me in Bitcoin. I'll buy your house in it, Bitcoin. The amount of stuff that really gets bought and sold in Bitcoin okay. is very small. It's mostly people buying it uh, for speculative purposes. They're buying it because they think the price is going to go up and they're going to make money. They're not buying it to buy their groceries or buy their house or fill up their gas tank. Okay, before I let you go, I, I, one of the things I, I, I really appreciate you doing this because people, trust is a big issue in, in our institutions, transparency and trust. We've seen 
whole elections be run or be populist have run against the so-called elites and on the lack of trust. So just getting this, these opportunities to get to know the people who are making decisions, I think is actually really crucial. So I do appreciate this. So I'm going to ask you a couple questions that are not on the bank's remit. You're feeling like you need to get your energy up. What is your go-to, and I've asked a former governor about this, as you know, what is your go-to playlist song <laughs> that gets Governor Macklin going? Go ahead. Uh, well, I, you know, I, I grew up in the 70s. I'm, I'm kind of a classic rock guy. If I, if I had to pick one song, um, um, I, I, some of those classic Peter Frampton songs, I can't. Wow, alive, Peter Frampton. If you, COVID style, you haven't been to a concert, if you could go to one concert right now, what would you go, who would you go see? What would I see? Well, the, the last concert I went to was uh, the Eagles. In, oh. uh, in in Toronto, and wow, okay. uh, it, was, it was a great show. Finally, what's keeping you up at night? Well, um, l let's go back to where we started. Uh, inflation's four and a half percent. We think it's going up close to five. Uh, that's an uncomfortable place to be uh, when your mandate is two percent inflation. So, what really, you know, our focus is really um, secure that complete recovery and bring inflation back to two percent. And uh, you know, that's number one. Governor, thanks for taking the time. Just a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure. It. Thank you for coming in. Having